So, what's in a name? Sometimes not much, but sometimes, and this is one of those times, there is a heck of a lot involved in a name. It was hard to decide where to begin this fun fact, but let's start with eight days before my daughter was born, March 23, 1989. This day will be forever known as Near Miss Day, the day the huge asteroid 4581 Asclepius was going to hit Earth, but it did a flyby instead. The flyby and the asteroid weren't discovered until my daughter's birthday eight days later, March 31st. A little late for a phew moment. This moment of astronomical angst brought a change in the science community and the governments that sponsored them. It also led to a lot of asteroid heading to Earth movies. Who can forget Armageddon? Or Bruce Willis. After the 4581 asteroid scare, Congress issued a mandate to all astronomers to figure out what's out there. Brian Skiff, who has been a research assistant at Lowell Observatory in Arizona since the 70s, got busy and is still busy discovering new small bodies in the universe. In fact, he has discovered or co-discovered over 40, and about a dozen bear his name. One night in November 2002, Brian found yet another object. He states, This thing was going about 4 degrees a day, so it was obviously a nearby object, given that main belt asteroids go about a quarter of a degree a day. As with any fast mover, he interrupted the regular observing plan to go back for follow-up observations that night, so that the object would not get lost. As usual, he reported the data to the Minor Planet Center, and then he forgot all about it. Obviously, it was just a near-Earth object, and a nice bright one, and a nice thing for us, so we moved on and didn't think anything of it, he says. Fast forward to Radio Lab's podcaster Latif Nasser putting his two-year-old son to bed one night this past year. While hanging out at Cribside, Nasser started paying attention to the solar system poster that his wife had purchased and put up on the wall by the crib. He suddenly noticed that on the poster, Venus had a moon. Wait, what? Since when? And that moon was named Zuzve. Nasser started googling Zuzve, which returned no information except that Zuzve means to call out and check. Undeterred, Nasser called NASA and was emphatically told, no, Venus doesn't have a moon. Still wondering, he called a space nerd friend, Liz, who works in NASA's media department, and she also confirmed, sorry, Venus does not have a moon. Since there's no mistaking the name on the poster and all the other info on the poster was correct, NASA decided to track down the artist, Alex Foster. Alex says he definitely found a bona fide map online that stated Venus had a moon-like object named Zuzvi, but he couldn't remember, or Zuzve, I guess, but he couldn't remember which website he used. Meanwhile, Liz, after thinking it over, texts Nasser this message. What if the Zs are twos? That's how we normally name asteroids. What if it's actually 2002 VE, the year 2002? When Nassar mentions this to Alex, Alex checks his notes and sure enough, he had misread his own handwriting when creating the poster. The Z's are actually twos. But the story doesn't end here. Now Nassar starts googling 2002 VE. He discovered that in 2003, a year after Brian Skiff observed the object 2002 VE for the first time, two other astro astronomers, Seppo Nicola at the Turlow Observatory and Paul Wiegert, University of Western Ontario, analyzed the object's orbit and found that it was the first of its kind. The object, which had received the temporary designation of 2002 VE68, is a quasi-moon. It appears to orbit Venus, but is in fact not gravitationally bound to it, but rather circles both the planet and the Sun in a complex and ultimately unstable orbit. Calculations show it will leave Venus's influence altogether within about 500 years, but they cannot figure out where Zuzve is going to hang out next. Coming right up is an image of Earth's first quasi-moon discovered last March. Brian Skiff wasn't aware of any of this follow-up work on the object he found until he got a call from Latif Nasser telling him that Venus has a quasi-moon and that it is named Zuzve. Skiff tried to impress upon Nasser that regardless of the mistake on the poster, the object is named 2002 ZE68. Latif tried to encourage Skiff to consider renaming the quasi-moon. Skiff was initially unimpressed. 
As the original discoverer, he was authorized to propose an official name for the object, as he had done for many of his previous asteroid discoveries. He is the guy that, after discovering four consecutively numbered asteroids in a row, convinced the IAU to name them after the four beetles. Initially crestfallen, Nasser, who is known for his persistence, told Skiff the whole story about the poster and the mistaken reading of the sloppy notes that resulted in the odd name and about the odd and unusual nature of the object's orbit, and he won him over. Nasser ended up writing up the formal proposal and Skiff and the observatory agreed to formally submit it to Gareth Williams, who acts as a secretary for the International Astronomical Union's working group on the solar system small body nomenclature. Williams was initially skeptical as well, noting that the IAU guidelines recommend that names for objects that cross Earth's orbit be based on mythology. By the time Radiolab's episode on Zeus Vey aired, the decision was still not final. Two of the committee's members had not yet voted, and the outcome was too close to call. The podcast became a cliffhanger with over 16 million downloads, including my daughter Tabitha, who sent it to me. Here's a picture of the hosts of Radiolab, Lulu Miller and Latif Nassar. It is a very fun po podcast. And on February 5th, by a very narrow margin, the IAU confirmed the name Zuzve for Object 2002 VE68. But the story still isn't over. Having become so interested in the subject of quasi-moons, Radiolab is about to launch a competition to come up with a new name for one of the at least seven quasi-moons that orbit the Sun alongside Earth. The only other planet known to have a quasi-moon sharing its orbit is Neptune. While details are still being worked out, one thing is clear. This time, the IAU insists the name really will have to be based on mythology. Darn, quasi-mundo just won't qualify. An amazing detail that astronomers discovered, Zuzve was once close to Earth. This little quasi-moon that defies all math calculations due to what is termed the three-body problem is a solar system traveler hanging out pretty much wherever it pleases. <laughs>